Uh, hey, Alan, how you doing? It's good to see you. Uh, you had a great race at uh, Lake Eustace the other weekend. Uh, yep. Introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about the racing up there. Yeah, great to see you too. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Alan Trahune, uh MC racer, uh, just like you are. Um, but uh, I'm also the uh, the manager of the one North American uh, One Design Division here at North Sales, and um, sailed a lot of East Gows early in my life, and all kinds of other boats. And kind of the MC is a little bit uh, kind of my favorite thing to do right now. So uh, it's been good, and. Uh, yeah, we just got back from the train wreck. Uh, epic weekend of weather in Eustis, I would say. I don't think wind and warm and, well, warm enough, let's put it that way. And um, yeah, we had, what, seven races, something like that? It was, seven uh, races. yeah, it was a great weekend and good result. And uh, yeah, it was, it was really good. Yeah, it was like you and Andy, you know, back and forth. Yeah. You want a few, you want a few. And yeah, yeah, he got, he got me in the end, you know, he, he once again showed why he's a, I don't even know how many times, 18,000 time national champion. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a really good weekend. And for me, it was the first day, first weekend out in a brand new boat that I had just gotten from Andy and boat was really nice. And, you know, I highly recommend it for anybody who's, uh, who's in the market because uh, I mean, I had a pretty new boat before and the brand new boat is really nice. I mean, I was super impressed. So they've done a lot with the layout of the uh, rigging, running rigging, and uh, mm -hmm. it, it yeah. definitely is looking good these days. Yeah. Yeah. The boat was really nice right out of the box. I mean, honestly, got the boat, brought it straight to Eustis, and won the first race that I ever sailed in it. So you can't really complain too much about that. No. Yeah. So uh, you and Andy, so what do you, what did you yeah. do? What do you think you yep. did that really um, gave you an edge? Maybe give us yep. a little bit of a sense of what you think yep. Andy did to edge you out. And then, yeah. We'll the rest of the fleet. Yeah. Um, well, I, I think, you know, Eustace is a funny venue in that it's a lake, but it's pretty big. Um, it's, it's more open water sailing than you would think, but it still has very lake like characteristics and that it's pretty shifty and things change quite a bit. So I think there's a couple things there when I think about the regatta that, you know, either went well or didn't go well, but, um, you know, one of them is the line was very long, the starting line. I mean, there was a couple of races we had a midline boat and then some we didn't, but the line was really long. So if you've got five, six, seven degrees of line bias to one end or another, it was a pretty big jump of people being ahead. So I think that was one thing it was it, for me is kind of hanging near the middle of the line until two, three, four minutes to go and then kind of hedging towards the side that I thought the first shift or the starting shift would be on because you get a pretty big jump on half the fleet right away if the line was uh, pretty square. Um, Were you a port attacker or a starboard lurker? Or what would um, you I'm, I'm probably more of a starboard lurker than a port attacker because the one thing the MC does well is with both boards down, you can kind of lurk around pretty um, pretty well and, and not lose too much space. So I think you can um, own your space on the line for a decent amount of time, unlike a boat with a keel or a boat, you know, with a board that kind of slides and moves all over, especially if you stop. So um, the one thing I think for the MC is if you watch the, the, the guys who are really good at starting, they never go directly head to wind. They're always kind of at close haul. They're just below, even with the sail luffing to stop. So that way, if they need to control the speed, they can, if you have to turn to accelerate or turn at all, it's really hard. So I think that's a big, um, a big tip that I would take away. And, and generally I've seen not a yeah. full luff. You're basically just on a luff because you want to be able to pull that sail in and get out yeah. of it fast if you need. Absolutely. To. Yeah. And, and one of the things that's a little surprising, I think, especially maybe not in the lightest of air, but as soon as there's any breeze at all, you have to have, I'm not saying full vang by any stretch, but you have to have a little bit of vang tension on so that as you're luffing, and you need a little sheet, the leech will engage just a little bit to get the boat going. Whereas if there's no vang on and you sheet in, you have to almost oversheet to get the sail to engage. It's a little bit of a problem. So one of the things I, I'm pretty aware of is having like a, a starting mark on my vang so that I know when I'm luffing on the line, there's just enough tension that if I need to engage the sail, it'll engage, but not depower it, if that makes any right. sense. Yeah. 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 Smart. 